of the Embroidered Elephant podcast. My name is Kimberly and thank you for joining me. Um, you may have found me um, from Instagram um, on the Embroidered Elephant, spelled the same as on here, O-Y instead of an O-I. Um, and I also have an Etsy shop which I will um, be updating at the end of this video. Um, sorry about the noise, someone's just decided to mow their lawn. <laughs> um, but yeah, this podcast will consist of um, a lot of sewing and crochet um, and a bit of embroidery as well and anything else that I sort of throw in the mix. So I hope that's... Um, I hope that's interesting for you. Um, although this will be more of a podcast style today, I'm hoping in the future to make um, the more studio style vlogs. I've seen a few that are very um, inspiring um, and I'm hoping that after I get this video up I will be able to um, expand on the studio style vlogs. Thank you for joining me on this vlog. I hope that um, you enjoy it and let's get started. So all things going well, you would have just seen me making this hat. So I finished it and I've woven in the ends um, and you will see from the inside, it doesn't look much different from the outside. And this is what it looks like on. I can't even find the back. No. So usually I don't go for colours this bright at all. Um, I usually go for if I'm going to if it's something I'm going to wear, I usually go for much um, more minimalist colours, usually grey or white. I actually went to the shop looking for a white colour. Um, but this one just caught my eye and after a couple of moments of hesitation I decided to just go for it. I think that it is, um, everyone on my Instagram feed at the moment is, um, is starting to get in the auto autumn mode. So there's pumpkins everywhere, pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice everything, candles, um, everyone's starting to get cosy and I needed a winter hat. Um, and I think that the orange pumpkin vibes really rubbed off on me. So that is the um, Woolcraft Shetland Tweed Chunky Yarn. Um, it doesn't have a colour name that I can see, um, but it's shade 1376. And it was lovely to work with. Um, you'll see, obviously, in the way that it's been crocheted up you'll see that there are darker patches um, but that's also obviously just the way that it is in the yarn sorry that it's not focusing um, yeah so the way that it's crocheted up you'll see that there are darker patches so black dark brown patches and they crochet up really well. Um, it really adds something to the hat. And I think I might get a bobble for the top as well. Um, but I'm going to be very selective about where I buy them from because obviously um, I would like to, I would like it to be faux fur. Um, I don't know some places that you can get them uh, where they say faux fur, but they're not. Um, so yeah, that's that's another story. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping to get a bobble for the top and I think that will finish it off really well. So that's a project for me that I've recently made. I've just shown you my hat, um, which I really enjoyed making. Um, the first attempt I made was actually a hat for my partner, which you can tell just from looking at it from a distance, it is quite long. Um, it looks okay when he's wearing it though. Um, so you'll see that I did follow the pattern going between the back loop only on this one. Um, don't know if it's focusing very well. 
Um, but because it was my first attempt, I have missed quite a few stitches. So you'll see there's a hole there. Um, there are other holes as we go round, or inconsistencies. Um, but he, he loves it. He's not a um, crafty person himself. He doesn't knit, he doesn't crochet, he doesn't sew. Um, he's more computer technical. Um, so he was he was absolutely thrilled to get this. Um, which I really loved because when you make something for someone, um, sometimes you sort of expect them to take it for granted. Whereas he was he was over the moon, he said that I didn't have to buy him a birthday present because this was enough um, and although it wasn't expensive he said that um, he really appreciated me spending time on it. So this one um, spent, this one took about two days to crochet up, obviously not non-stop um, but it took a very long time to do um, and the reason, um, there is a reason why I made him a hat. Um, during lockdown, obviously the same story with everyone, um, he hasn't been getting any haircuts. Um, so he asked me whether I would be able to help him trim it. He'd been putting it off and off and off and off and off. Um, and his hair grows out. Um, so he although it doesn't grow down it grows out and it you can just tell that it hasn't been done for a while anyway so I helped him um, trim it and he used the lowest setting and it was a lot shorter than he was expecting and um, what he would have liked I think he wanted more of a trim um, and I'm in no way I'm in no way a, um, a hairdresser but I offered to trim it and he said no so Anyway, so his hair is um, quite short at the moment, um, so he was complaining um, when it was a bit colder that his head was cold, so I offered to make him a hat. Um, and this is the hat I made. Um, again, you have to fold it over quite a lot. Um, but it looks alright when it's on. Um, I mean, for a first attempt, it's the first thing that I've made that you can wear. Um, and I've only been crocheting since a few weeks after Mother's Day, if that was the present I got my mum. Um, so it's not that bad. Not that bad for, for me. <laughs> for me, anyway. Um, so yeah, so he really enjoys that. I probably won't put... I was going to put a bubble on the top, but I don't, I don't know if I will. Probably not, to be honest. So yeah, that those were the two hats I've made most recently. Um, I also um, came across a pattern. Um, it's from Dabbles and Babbles um, and it's called Easy Thick Crochet Wash and Dishcloths. Bit of a mouthful. Um, <laughs> but the story behind this is that I really I had some yarn in my stash I'd had for, I was given by my nan um, and it was 100% acrylic and it was really rough um, on my fingers and I didn't know what to make with rough yarn um, but I came across the, um, the pattern of dishcloths so these are really easy, again it's just single crochet um, you can see that I've held two yarns together um, on each of these it's just scrap yarn so the dark green is scrap yarn um, yep so it's just single crochet you obviously make a chain I think this was about 20 um, and then you just crochet it up until it's a square it gives you a good tip for working out if it's a square you fold it in half if the corner meets the corner then it's a square um, again I made some more these are this is obviously a much smaller size um, with the little hook on it as well um, smaller still 
I don't know exactly what to do with smaller ones but I'm sure there will be a use for them somewhere around the house obviously with the amount more cleaning that we're doing at the moment um, I've got one about this size in the sink at the moment and just to wash dishes up um, cleans quite well um, we're just going to throw it in the wash um, and we'll see in a while well when I do my next wash what it comes out like um, but I'm sure I'm sure it'll be perfectly fine it's acrylic um, so yeah uh, the long-term pattern I'm working on at the moment is um, it's a granny square blanket with um, obviously grey and this is a variated yarn so I haven't got a strict pattern for this in mind um, but I will probably wing it um, I'll crochet up the blocks and just see how they fit together how what looks good um, yeah so I've done four four rounds of the variegated yarns then I've done a grey then I've done four more rounds and then a grey or a colour on the other ones and three rounds so it's very simple um, doesn't take a lot of brain power um, and then I have started so I'm thinking that these can go in the middle sort of grey colour together like a little um, cross and then I've started doing little granny squares as well that's one this is obviously finished with the edging on it um, that one's finished as well and that one see their ends haven't been sewn in yet it's another one just need the borders so the main issue I have or the thing that's been putting me off a little bit is a wool issue so this the yarn I used is Hayfield Spirit and it's in the colour 0408 I'm sure that it has a um, colour um, online but I can't remember the name of it I haven't got that much left um, basically after well during lockdown when they said that shops can open again um, I had started crocheting during lockdown um, so my mad rush to the um, to our local hobby craft to get yarn um, resulted in me my first ever yarn dash um, just getting whatever looked good and I only got one skein of each which um, was a bit of a rookie error um, which I know now I know now that it's best to go um, and pick up stuff that you've got a project in mind for so I've been back to the same hobby craft our local one I went to one when I went away on holiday to Cornwall they didn't have any I've looked online as well and it seems as though everyone has gone for the same yarn um, because wherever I go I can't seem to find it um, which makes me really unmotivated because I don't want to run out of yarn and not have anything similar to use instead um, so I think what I'm going to do is just have to power through <laughs> I'll give myself some strength and just carry on making the small grannies until I run out of yarn and just wait just wait until the the stock comes back in really uh, whenever that may be and just keep an eye out um, but if anyone knows anyone who is giving any away or wants to do a swap or um, is selling any please let me know and um, I would be very very grateful if you could let me know right so after that pleading um, 
I'm now on to my sewing mix. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I do have an Etsy shop um, and I've been really bad lately in um, putting my makes up on Etsy. Um, but they will be up within either today or within a couple of days of shooting this vlog. Um, but here is a pile of things that will be in my shop soon. So, um, starting off, um, I did a poll recently on Instagram. Um, there was a set of um, postcard type material. It was for a quilt, quilting material, quilting panel. There we go there in the end. Um, it was a quilting panel um, of postcard type fabric and I um, wasn't sure whether to keep it as one and make it as sort of a banner or whether to make it into individual bags and the majority voted for bags. So this was the first attempt that I made. Um, Apologies in advance, um, they have been in my cupboard, I've been procrastinating putting them online, so they are quite wrinkled, please forgive me. Um, so they are drawstring project bags, um, this one, I don't know the name of the bird, I believe it begins with a C, Cardina, Cardinal, I think it says on the front might be the name of the bird I'm not sure um yeah so it's cotton fabric this is cotton um and then you've got the lining is um a poly cotton brown um but it matches the the casing at the top and it matches the drawstring as well so that's the first attempt that I made um the second one I made was the dandelion which is one of my favourites um, this has calico lining instead which makes it sturdier um, yeah. then you have um, the butterfly, red butterfly my sister-in-law would know what this butterfly was called she knows a lot about um, butterflies, bees, flowers very knowledgeable and then you've got this drawstring it's a oh I can't remember the name dragonfly, there we go dragonfly, it's got orange casing orange back, again it's got the calico inside a little brown base then you have a turquoise one um, this is a wren the little egg, I love the egg the back two more got the sunflower or it looks like a sunflower anyway and the blue casing and it's got two drawstrings and lastly you have what looks like a daisy you've got the little ladybird and it's sort of a peachy fabric it looks quite pink on camera it's quite peachy again with the two drawstrings there was one other postcard type fabric it is a bumblebee um, and I made it into a zip zippered pouch um, with the yellow lining um, I had high hopes for this, um, but I must admit that I'm not very confident on doing zips as you can see. Um, I really need to watch some tutorials or get a lesson from someone. Um, I've tried quite a few different ways of doing it, I've unpicked this a couple of times and done it back, um, but I can't seem to get it right without puckering the fabric. Um, and again at the end it's not done very well so this will not go in my shop obviously because I don't want to put products up that I know that I wouldn't want to receive 
Um, so I will either unpick this, make it into something else, or I will keep it maybe, I don't know, I'll, I'll find a use for it somewhere. Um, and it's quite handy to have a little pouch, you know, for makeup bits or projects. I'll always find projects to fit in there. And the last bag that I made, a um, little bit random, um, is this massive tomato bag. <laughs> Again, it is, it is random. Um, I don't know why I had um, tomato fabric. It's sort of a canvassy linen material. Um, I don't know why I had this fabric. I'm the sort of person that can go into a fabric shop not need anything or need like a zip or something so, or a button and I will come out with stacks of fabric um, because they're on clearance, it's end of bolt um, just because I fancy it and again I, I hardly ever have a project in mind uh, which isn't very good for my stash which is under my bed at the moment um, but yeah this, this has um, quite bright um, cotton lining um, and it has a pouch as well which is one of the panels um, I was hoping to put this up in my shop because it's quite quirky I think um, but there are quite a few flaws in the fabric which I didn't realise until I'd started sewing it I um, don't know if you can see there it's got um, must have got caught, that must have been why it was on clearance um, yeah just a few little holes There's, it's nothing major um, but it's again it's not something that I would be happy putting up in my shop um, just because I, d I don't want um, I don't want fabric with holes or that puckers or anything like that in in my shop I want the project bags obviously to last as long as they can um, so that's another thing that will be getting filled soon so maybe as I start putting my blanket together I will be able to put it in there make use of it I'm not sure not sure um, but thank you for joining me for my first episode I hope that you found it interesting and I hope to see you next time. Um, I'm not quite sure at the moment how often I will be putting these up but I'm hoping to do them at least once every month. Um, yeah, so I will see you soon. Um, and if you want to stay in touch please feel free to follow me on Instagram. The link will be below. Um, and check out my Etsy shop which I will be updating very soon um, and yeah take care, stay safe bye